What's up everybody, Christopher here back with another video from a remote location. Today I want to talk about why German is a beautiful language. But first, if you're new around here and you like seeing my American and Germany experiences, consider subscribing. Make it easier by activating the bell notifications for more exciting weekly uploads. So before I get started, let me just apologize if you hear any background noise. I got a lot of stuff going on outside my windows and you might hear a thing or two here and there but let's just get to it. Now to preface this video, let me just first say that I don't claim to be even an English guru, so I'm not trying to be a master at understanding the German language. This is just something that I've noticed over time from Germans talking to me and correcting me and telling me. So to begin, let me just say the first reason I think German is a beautiful language is that it is so specific. The whole inspiration for this video came from me watching a video on YouTube. I don't remember right now it was suggested to me. I'll link it below if I can think of it. But the person that was speaking on the German language in this video, I agreed with so many of the points that he was making. Like initially the first thing he was talking about was how German is eloquent by nature. You know how it's able to express so many things in the way that it does and how switching or adjusting pronunciation or the way something is spelled could actually mean the difference between you saying what you meant to say and you actually saying something you never meant to say. It could essentially make one sentence a complete other sentence because it's all grammatically dependent. So how did you use a particular noun or verb? Which form of the noun did you use? Who did you address in that statement or question? And it makes a difference because it seems that the German language was made to be exact and direct. So real quick, you know the stereotype of Germans being rude and cold and sometimes mean. Personally, I don't think that has anything to do with the people themselves. I think it's because they just don't have a loose language structure. Their language structure is just very, very specific. It's an exact kind of language. For example, um, and this is going to be off the top of my head, but let's just take the sentence, I jumped over that log, okay? So depending on who you're speaking to, one person can be like, I jumped over that log. Another person could be like, I leaped over that fallen tree. And another person will be like, I hopped over that dead wood. Where for them, that sentence is, Ich bin über den Baumstamm gesprungen. That's pretty much specific for them. I don't think there's any other alternatives to that sentence but that. If you're German, let me know in the comments below, obviously. So either one of these could be used, but to a German, if you say, I hopped over that dead wood, they may take dead wood to mean like, a two by four that's not alive anymore because that's how specific their mind is when it comes to speaking. Like, what are you really meaning to say? You more or less got to get to the point, but we'll talk about that later. The very next thing for me that shows how beautiful the German language is, is word form or word order. This could be very confusing sometimes because even some German friends I know still tell me that they get a little bit confused by it. So imagine how somebody like me feels once I get corrected on something or I learn something new and it's just like, wow, okay, that's how that's supposed to be. <laughs> Got it. So I kind of have learned some parts of the German sentence to keep mindful of. This isn't going to be in complete accuracy, obviously, but I think it's very close. So I got six of them here. So first of all, the subject, which is commonly nouns. But that doesn't stop there because are we talking plurals or masculine or feminine form, neutrals, diminutives? Next, verbs. Irregular, passive, impersonal. Next, the position of occupying particles. Now for me, this gets confusing because knowing which position of a sentence either the verb or noun goes is just always confusing to me, which just goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, what's next? You have accusative or dative objects, which also plays a role in where the noun or verb is placed in the sentence. Then you have complements. Those themselves are broken up into components, temporal, causal, modal, or locative. And then lastly, the particle niche, which is basically negating a positive or a complement. With all this stuff to remember, you have to kind of be brought up on it and make it that mandatory structural way of speaking or you're going to have a hard time. Now, it's not impossible, obviously. I know many fluent non-native German speakers, but what I'm saying is for people like me, this is, this is a task. And I feel like you could probably get the vocabulary down to a science. You can even nail the accents. But, but if you screw up word order or word form, people will know that you're not from here. They'll know. That's not a bad thing, but they will know. So moving on to the last thing that I think makes the German language beautiful. The point. What is your point? 
Sometimes people don't even know that they're speaking in circles. They don't always mean to, and I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but for some people, myself included, I just want to get to the point. So say if I wanted information from someone, I give as much information to the person as possible so that they don't have to ask many questions in return. Does that make any sense? Uh, okay, here's an example. Excuse me, sir, can you tell me how to get to the museum? I went over to this bus stop and it said that the bus was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago, but it hasn't shown. The sign says to go over to the information desk if you have any issues. I went to the information desk and they said to check with you, the ticket handler, to see if you know any information. Oh, that that's interesting. Did you uh, did you check the bus schedule? I, I, I yeah, I, I said I checked the bus schedule. Oh, what the bus schedule say? The bus schedule said that the bus was supposed to be here. Oh, did you check with information? I did check with information right after I checked the bus schedule. Oh, what they say? They sent me to you. Oh, then no, I don't know anything. So that's what I mean. I put every piece of information in my initial meeting with the person. I told them everything that I did. I told them the alternatives to what I was supposed to do. And then I told them what resulted from doing all that, which led me to that person. Now I'm exaggerating, I'm putting on a little bit, but that's what I mean. I usually answer as much as I can going into it so I don't waste much time going in this circle talk. Most times I, I just wanna get to the point. But that's all I got for this video. Those are three things that I feel make the German language a very, very beautiful language. Obviously, if you agree or disagree, let's talk about it in the comments. I am very active in that section and I don't mind talking to you guys. I actually love it. Thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Why always me? Ooh, oh, like I'm Should I do a video in my messed up ass German? They wouldn't appreciate that. Ooh, why always me? Ooh, like I'm bad.